In this video, I'm going to show you an automation that uses perplexity and anthropic cloud to automatically create posts that are well formatted with rich media, including YouTube videos and Flux One images and publish them directly to WordPress. When it's done with that, it will automatically create the text for social media. And after reviewing that text, it will automatically publish it to social media. All you need to do to get started is to add a topic to this Airtable record and the automation will take care of the rest. This is a follow on from our previous video where we built out this system using GPT 4.0. If you have not watched that, then I'd highly recommend you do that first and then come back to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to adapt that system to use Anthropic Cloud, which is not quite as easy as just swapping over prompts because the models are different and you will need to send messages and adjust your prompting quite a bit just to make sure you're getting reliable and good responses that we can use in our automations. These are some pretty extensive automations. If you want to get access to the blueprints in make.com so that you can import them at the click of a button, then check out the link in the description where you'll get access to our community, where you can access all of our automations, including the one in this video. Before we dive deeper into the automations here, I just wanna compare at a high level, the differences between what we got from the GPT-4.0 version of this system and the Claude system. So this version is what we got from GPT-4.0. You can pause the video as you're going through this and just have a look through it and try and get a sense for what you think of the writing style and structure and tone. Overall, the writing is pretty decent in my opinion, but it feels just a kind of a little bit chat GPT-ish, what you're getting from GPT-4.0. Like we've added some prompting within that automation to try and humanize the output a bit, but overall there is room for improvement. And I think that's where Claude fits in here. When we compare it against this Claude version, it just feels a little bit better in my opinion. Now it can sometimes be difficult to quantify the differences in text output but in general, just from reading this, it just feels a little bit kind of more humanized without us going really in depth into the prompting. So by default, I think you do tend to get better, more readable outputs from Claude than you do from GPT-4.0. So the big question, how do we adapt our previous system that we saw from the other video? And again, there's a card up at the top to check out that other video. How do we adapt that to use Anthropic Claude instead of GPT-4.0? To start this process, we move to ready for outline. We add in a topic and it will then call perplexity and then ask Anthropic Claude to interpret the response from perplexity and to create an article outline. This is very similar from the previous video. So you can just copy and paste that in to the main content. So in Anthropic, we added in Anthropic Claude we just went through a basic authentication process, very similar to what you would do for OpenAI. And I selected Claude 3.5 Sonnet and then selected a user role of type text. And I will zoom in a bit here. So you see, I basically copied and pasted in what we had previously, which works fine for us. In this case, I'm going to use an article outline that we got previously, and I will move this to ready for article generation. Now, before I do that, we'll just run through this at a really, really high level. We have an article outline here, which is generated from this process. And you can then go through that and update it as you like. You can add in your own data information that you want to include in the article. From there, once we've moved it to ready for article generation, it then goes through this flow. This module will break up that outline into a JSON structure, which then allows us to iterate over the article section by section and then generate that article. The benefit of this is that we can generate much longer articles and go way beyond the usual context output limit of the language models. Within that, we have a router where there is a 50-50 chance where it will either go and crawl Google to try and find a relevant YouTube video to add to the page, or else it will try to generate an image using Flux One which is a very advanced new image model. After that, it combines all the sections together. It creates an article introduction. It looks for another YouTube video for the start and then puts it all together, gets another Flux One image for the featured image. It then uploads that image to WordPress, creates the post. And then after that, it generates all the text for social media and adds it to the Airtable record. If that's hugely confusing, then just make sure to go back to the original video where I go through that in much more detail. But to explain how we implemented this using Claude, the prompting is slightly different to what we did 
with GPT-40. This is what we did in GPT-40. I'm not saying the prompting is perfect, but it's well suited to OpenAI's GPT-40 and where we're getting it to convert the article outline into JSON. Now, this was written very much in natural language and we had a very basic system role. Whereas for Claude, we've added this user role, we've added the text, and we've added the article outline that was in Airtable and added them within these XML tags. Claude is specifically good at responding to XML tags. So if you have text or examples or information that you want it to process separately, then you can delimit that, you know, within these particular tags. So I have article outline and then a closing tag of article outline there. Other than that, it's quite similar to the original prompt. I've updated the example here to be more suited to Claude. Now for JSON outputs, it's not as easy to get reliable JSON outputs from Anthropic Claude. So what I've done here, here is I've provided an example and I've added pre-filling of the prompt. So we have the original prompt and we have pre-fill in here. The problem with Claude is that it will often respond with filler text at the very start, which then can cause errors in your automations. So if we don't prompt it for the exact start or the, the exact beginning of what we want in its response, then it might respond with something like, here is your JSON string or here, here is your JSON object. And then when we try to parse that later, then it causes issues. So what we've done is we've had the prompt and we've already taken over the role of Claude of the Claude Assistant and we've given it exactly the starting response for that, which is called pre-filling. And then from there, Claude will continue on with that. We're starting the sentence for it and then it will continue for there, which really helps to guide Claude a lot better than just letting it do what it wants. We've also provided a system prompt, which is you will convert a text article outline into a JSON list of sections. You will only respond in JSON format. So when we've done that, it then parses the JSON. However, because we've pre-filled the response, we need to then add that into this text response, if that makes sense. The response from Claude will be everything after our pre-filled response. So we need to add in the pre-filled response and then add in the response from Claude. Okay, so we're going to run this once and let it do its thing. Let it create the JSON outline from the article outline and I'll keep going from there. So as you see, the text response was everything after that pre-filled response there. And when we added that together in the JSON, then we have a full JSON string like you see here. And it correctly divided up that article outline into different sections that we can then work through here. And it's currently working through that. Okay, so overall the prompting is very similar Again, the prompting for attracting the sources is similar to the previous one, but we're adding in the article using XML tags here. So article, article. And by the way, to build these prompts, I copied and pasted in the, the original GPT-40 prompts into this, which is the Anthropic prompt generator. And then this generated the output that was a lot more suited to Claude. Clearly we also needed to update things, but in general it added in these kind of XML tags and it just kind of improved the prompting to be more suited to this model. So for extracting the sources, we want to extract the sources from the article and so we can add that to the very end of the article. And what it's doing is you will be given an article to analyze your task is to extract the names of companies and organizations. It separated the article outline and added that into the prompt using these XML tags. So Claude knows exactly what it's looking at. And then we have some other prompting here to really go into detail as to what it wants. After that, we're set in a YouTube list variable so that we don't end up duplicating the same YouTube videos again and again. I've gone through that in the previous video. Now we're gonna iterate through the article section by section. Here, the prompting again is very similar. Towards the end of the prompt, we've separated out the title. So we have topic, this XML tag, the section title, and the outline. Underneath role, I've pre-filled the response again to start with H2. So we want each section heading to start with a H2 tag. And again, pre-filling that response, make sure that it doesn't start with that kind of introductory kind of text that we don't want. So after it's written the article section, we're formatting the HTML for the section. And similar to the previous video, we've added the text response. We've also added in this H2 that we pre-filled from the previous prompt. So then that section is formatted in HTML. We move on to the next stage and then it goes through this router and there's a 50-50 chance of that. And it uses the data for SEO API 
to search Google and then try to get some relevant YouTube videos. When we're choosing the video URL for that, again, we've added in text as the XML tag for that and passed in the value from data for SEO. When it's creating the Flux One images, based on feedback from our community, I've added in an image prompt helper. So what this is doing is it's simplifying the prompt that we're sending to Flux One to try and get better imagery. And the reason is that we were previously passing in the section heading and the title of the article, and this just makes it more likely that Flux One will generate illustrations and text and things like that within the images that will be unusable. So if we simplify the topic, it gives Flux One more license to create simpler imagery, do it at once without being pegged down to add in specific text or blog related content to the images. It does not always work, but it can help matters. So we're adding in this prompt, which is you will classify the main topic of the provided text. What is the main topic of the following? So section heading and the topic, the title. We then pass that to file.ai or whatever service you're using to generate Flux One images. When we previously ran this, we got back a really basic response from this image prompt helper for a specific section, which read remote work trends, which is a nice simple prompt to pass into Flux One. I ran into some issues when I was trying to pass the response from Claude to generate this Flux One image. There was likely hidden characters within the Claude response. So I just added in this absolutely horrendous list of nested replace objects. What this is doing is it's escaping the string so that it's suitable for JSON. So there's certain characters and hidden characters that if you add in to a JSON string like this, it will come back with an error because file.ai will not be able to interpret the JSON string. You know, it'll think that there's a new line or it'll break the formatting of the string. There currently is not a feature in make.com to automatically escape a string for JSON. So we're using this instead of that. After that, we're parsing that response and setting this variable and then we're combining all those at the end for this aggregate sections. When it goes through this iterator, it will combine all of the sections that were generated as well as the media items and combine these all into one long string like you see here. So now that we're generating the introduction, when we're choosing the video URL, that's almost the exact same as previously done. The prompt for the introduction is very similar to what we did previously as well. It's just we're passing in the combined text from the aggregator into this and then it's gonna create an introduction for that in the article. I'm also pre-filling the response and starting that with a P tag, which is a HTML paragraph tag, because I want the introduction to start with paragraph text instead of unnecessary introductions or an unnecessary AI introduction, like here is your paragraph. After that, we're passing that back into this humanized content prompt. And I'm again adding this text that we added in that was pre-filled. It's not particularly necessary to do this in Claude because the, the content is already pretty humanized. I'm just adding this in because there's no harm really. After that, we're going to format the HTML to make sure that the introduction is in, a, is in the correct format. And again, similar to the previous one where we're just adding in these XML tags at the end, as long as well as similar to the previous one, we're adding in the text response from the humanized content section. We're adding in another image prompt helper like we did previously. And we're also using the file.ai API to generate a Flux One image. And then we're going to use this horrendous list of nested replace statements as well. And by the way, before, anybody mentions it in the comment section, it might not be fully necessary to add all of these replace functions within this, but there's no harm in doing it just to make sure that the format of the JSON is correct. It's just less likely to error out when we have this kind of escaping of characters. After that, we get the file, we upload the file to WordPress. When we're uploading a post, we're then passing it a bunch of different responses from previous modules within the automation such as this is the introduction, this is the YouTube video, this is the combined text from the aggregator, and then this is the list of sources. I've also nested a bunch of replace tags. Again, you're probably thinking, why more replace tags? I've nested a bunch of replace tags here because from my testing of this, Claude was coming out with certain tags that might break the article or might break the layout of the page. So we do not want 
Claude to come back with something like an article tag because that could quite well break the article and the whole format of the WordPress page will be messed up. It's not going to break your website, it would just break that particular page. So again, we've nested all these replace tags. We're replacing a div tag, a closing div tag, a starting article tag, a closing article tag. I've not done that for this one because it's a YouTube video. After that, once we've uploaded the post, we get the post that was uploaded and then we create an article summary. That's, I think, the exact same prompt that was in the previous video. And the prompting for each of the social networks, again, very similar. I've removed section about sources here because that was coming out with some weird output. And I'm just adding in the text response within these XML tags. So earlier on in this process, I kicked off this article generation and that is complete. So I'm going to look at the output from that, which is this, and this is on a test website. The featured image looks really, really good. It's a very realistic image. It's only when you kind of look at this very closely that you kind of start asking questions. And again, the output is looking pretty good. The text looks good. Things are well formatted. We have a YouTube video showing up there. We don't have any filler introduction text that are, will be really dead giveaways for AI. You know, this is looking pretty good, but in a previous version of when I tried this out, it came up with this which is here's the updated text incorrect HTML syntax, which is definitely not what we want in our articles. So the prompting that I showed you in this video helps to eliminate those kinds of introductions. It's also written this from a personal perspective, which really is a kind of a matter of preference. If you want that, you can alter that based on the tone of voice, which is mentioned there. So yeah, in this video, it generated a bunch of YouTube videos and then one image at the end and that image looks really good too. It's added in the sources at the end. So that's the automation in a nutshell. And again, if you want to get access to the make.com blueprints so you can import this automation at the click of a button, then check out the link in the description to our community where you'll get access to all of our automation templates, including the one in this video.